At the age of 26, my life changed forever. I became a dad. Today, mommy is teaching an art class, so this is a daddy and baby day. And uh, he's been uh, napping for the last hour and I've been too afraid to move. Having a son is the best thing that's ever happened to me, but no one could prepare me for how much I would worry about my child. And after we had a bit of a health scare early on, my outlook shifted big time. Most of the things I knew about vitamins and nutrition were from when I was sponsored as a 22-year-old filmmaker to shoot a documentary in Peru. And that documentary was on vitamins. Yeah, vitamins. The last time I even remembered taking vitamins, they were shaped like popular cartoon characters. But as soon as my partner was pregnant, I was insistent that she started taking go. prenatal vitamins right away. Ready to face the day. <laughs> Even before he was born, I was worried about his health and well-being. And now, I worry constantly. Is my son getting enough food? Should we be giving him more supplements? How can we get him to take the things that he should be taking? Am I helping my partner enough? Am I making enough money to keep him fed? And when I'm working, am I working too much? Am I missing moments that I'll never be able to revisit? Being a parent is a scary balancing act, and I couldn't help but think about the parents I met years ago in Peru. Parents that would travel for hours so they could take a leap of faith on vitamins. And although the families there had so little, they all seemed so happy and not in a constant state of panic. Then I found out that Vitamin Angels, the nonprofit I shot a documentary in Peru about, were heading to Guatemala to check up on their vitamin distribution program there. I asked if I could tag along for the journey, but this time from the new perspective of being a parent. We are on the road to Guatemala. One last little ride with my son until I'm uh, away for a whole week. Uh, I think the craziest thing is going to be uh, seeing how much he develops in a week. Uh, right now he's at the, the stage where every single day he's able to do something new. So it's going to be weird to not see all the little milestones. Really hope he doesn't start walking while I'm gone. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a big, a big difference. I'm gonna level with you. Guatemala is a country I knew very little about. Even the world map at my office didn't even have the courtesy of writing the whole name on it. It's just Guat. But for some reason they could write the full name of literally every other country surrounding it. Anyways, Guatemala has a population of about 16 million people, is about 42,000 square miles in size, has a horrific history of a genocide committed against its indigenous people, and the official language is Spanish. So why would a nonprofit be delivering vitamins here? Well, Guatemala has the fifth highest rate of malnutrition in the world. It is the highest rate of stunting out of any of its surrounding countries. A 1 in 330 lifetime risk of maternal death and a mortality rate of 29 out of 1,000 for children under 5. But thanks to generous individuals and nonprofits in Guatemala, Vitamin Angels is able to reach the most vulnerable people here and keep them from becoming one of these statistics. The first place we visited was a preschool in Penayachel. It was run by Vitamin Angels Guatemalan field partner, a nonprofit called Mayan Families. At this school, the kids are educated, fed a nutritious meal, and receive vitamins from Vitamin Angels. I instantly connected with two brothers, a three-year-old Patricio and a five-year-old Marlon. And as awkward as this broken Spanish introduction looks, within two minutes, the boys opened up, were bursting with energy, and wanted to play. It made me really excited for the next stages of my son. And it also made me realize I should probably be a little bit more careful when playing. As the boys went to class, I sat down with their mother, Anna Maria, to ask her about raising two healthy, energetic boys. She didn't hesitate for a moment to tell me her story. She was only able to get a grade two education as a kid, then she had to drop out to help her family. And she was told that school was not a place for girls. Now as a single mom, she has the daunting task of raising two children and working two jobs. But she told me that her kids are aware of the sacrifices that she's making. And being the sweethearts that they are, they constantly tell her that they'll take care of her when they finish school and get a job. She didn't have access to prenatal vitamins with her first child, Marlon. She said he was born small, had less energy, and was sick constantly. With Patricio, she took prenatal vitamins and he was born a lot stronger, 
had better balance when he started walking, and she felt like she had the energy to take care of both kids. Luckily, both of her kids are receiving food and vitamins from the preschool these days, and she's very proud of how tall they're getting. To all the mothers and fathers I met on this trip, I asked them, what advice would you give me as a new parent? Anna Maria said, make sure you tell your kids how important it is to stay in school. A father of 13 kids told me that as a father, I gotta be prepared to give away a lot more than I thought I would, both financially and time-wise. A father of four kids told me to have a happy family, the most important thing is to make sure that you and your partner do an equal amount of work around the house. A father of two told me to appreciate all the time I spend with my family. I was also told, if you catch your kids swearing, make them eat a jalapeno as punishment. Which sounds hilarious, but apparently it's common in Guatemala. <laughs> the next place we went was San Jorge, where parents had traveled long and far to get to a vitamin distribution. You can see this room is packed. Here, children under five received doses of vitamin A and deworming tablets, and new and expecting mothers were getting their hands on prenatal vitamins. And while the children were getting dosed, I was put to work. Now I'm gonna measure them, attempt to uh, tell them to stand up straight in my broken Spanish. So, Quitar tus zapatos is quitar tus zapatos. Perfect. Boom. Okay, um, quitar tus zapatos. What surprised me most about measuring the heights of the children is that you could really see the stunting. Some of the children that looked like they were two years old ended up being five. Meanwhile, some of the kids that had proper nutrients from pregnancy onward look the height that you'd expect them to be. The thing about stunting is it's not just about being physically shorter. It's often a sign of other impacts of poor nutrition that aren't visible. Kids who are not nourished properly are not gonna develop their full intellectual capacity. And when it's been researched, I, I've heard as high as 10% difference in IQ scores, I mean, that's, that's between being average and being above average. After a long day of parents waiting patiently, we managed to get about 80 kids dosed. But the dosing ended on a bit of a bittersweet note. The last kid to make it through was a rather malnourished four-year-old. And, you know, he got scared. And he didn't want to take the vitamins. And the health workers, they tried as hard as they could, but they couldn't safely administer the vitamin A. And eventually they had to pack up. It really broke my heart to see so much dedication from a parent sacrificing an entire day and a day's wage to end up empty-handed like that. I don't think that we realize the sacrifices our parents make for us until we're older. I, I think becoming a dad, what you get is that you get this, this incredible sense of provide and protect is that you just, you just want to be able to help take care of your child um, and you want to make sure that they're safe. When I go to these communities and sometimes, you know, if it's our first time in a village and the people are a little bit weary um, and just not sure who we are, I'll start off and say, look, you know, I want the same thing for your children that I want for my children. I want them to be able, able to be healthy and I want them to be able to have a good life. The more I spoke to parents, the more I found out how similar we all are. We all worry about the same things. We worry about the health of our kids, not making enough money to support our family, and we worry about our children's futures. When I asked them about their biggest dreams for their kids, everyone wanted their kids to be happy, to get educated, to find success in a career. When we shot this, it was close to Father's Day, so I asked the fathers, what would a perfect Father's Day look like? They all said they just wanted a day off work where they could spend time with their family. And for this guy, he wanted to spend the day playing soccer with his kids. I was told that the greatest Father's Day present is hugs that come from the heart. Then I asked them a burning question that was on my mind. Is there ever a chance that I'll get a full night's sleep again? <laughs> <laughs> Most parents just laughed at me. 
I guess sleep is just a sacrifice that all parents have to make. Underneath it all, for everyone, parenthood seems like an amazing yet terrifying experience that's not so different wherever you are in the world. Kids are just kids. They want to play, they want attention, they want to ride on your back, and for some reason most babies want to lick the lens of your camera. On the last morning I decided to do a little bit of an impulsive visit. I got excited about the idea that in a few years I'll be walking my son to school. So I got to walk two wonderful boys to school, and it was a blast. And by walk, I mean myself and my cameraman basically had to carry them. I learned a lot in Guatemala. I learned that we all need a little bit of help in different ways. And a better life can sometimes be as simple as having access to vitamins. Although fatherhood seems like it's gonna be a lot of work, the rewards seem even bigger. Something tells me the next 18 years are gonna zip by before I know it. All I wish is that I was a little bit more grateful growing up for all the things that my father and my parents sacrificed for me. To all the fathers out there, and mothers, and caregivers, thank you. What you do is amazing. Learn more about Vitamin Angels and how you can help at vitaminangels.org dad.